morning, church. Today I want to talk to you about Matthew chapter 16. This is an interesting passage. Again, it comes after Jesus has fed the 5,000. It also comes after Jesus has fed the 4,000. A very similar miracle, just a different situation. Anyway, we be, pick it up in Matthew 16. It says this, When they went across the lake, the disciples forgot to take bread. Be careful, Jesus said to them, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They discussed this among themselves and said, it's because we didn't bring any bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, you of little faith, why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000? And how many basketfuls you gathered? How is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread, but be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. What's interesting about the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees is that they basically taught that if you wanted God to do anything for you, you had to live a perfect life. In particular, what they taught was that if you lived a perfect life, then God would reward you. Not just reward you, he would come back again and reward the whole nation. And they were convinced that if they could just get their act together and live a perfect life, then God would bless them in amazing ways. And Jesus warns his disciples to not think that way. Don't think that God is all about waiting for you to do something perfect so that then he can reward you. Let's keep reading. It says this in verse 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. In other words, what Peter was saying is you're the one we've been waiting for. You're the one we've been hoping for this whole time. Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. That's the part that doesn't make sense. The Messiah is supposed to save us, and yet Jesus just said the Messiah was going to be killed? Well, Peter doesn't understand it, and he replies, Never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Our problem in life is that we far too often pay attention to the stuff that's right in front of us. Pay attention to the stuff that is blocking our way. We get our eyes stuck in the trees and we miss the forest. We get our eyes stuck on an obstacle and we don't realize the world that's around us. And Jesus says, I've got something for you. Jesus says, I've got a world for you. And Jesus says, I have a world for you to bless. See, our problem in life is that we get ourselves so stuck on the here 
and the now. We get ourselves so stuck on the things that we're concerned about. And God says, I've got a whole world that I'm thinking of. Jesus says to Peter, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. You can bring the kingdom to people on earth. But you can't tell them I'm the Messiah just yet. Because they won't understand it. Instead, you need to understand what this Messiah is really all about. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to die. And three days later, I'm going to rise again. Because, see, I've got something bigger in mind. I've got something better in mind. I've got something that doesn't just benefit you. I've got something that blesses the whole world. You have in mind just the things that concern humans. And God has in mind the things that concern all of creation a creation that he loves, a creation that he made, and a creation filled with people who need to know him. You have the keys of the kingdom, and the door doesn't get opened when you're thinking about yourself. The door doesn't get opened when you're thinking about your comfort. The door doesn't get opened when you're thinking about your own obstacles. The door gets opened when you deny yourself, take up your cross, follow Jesus, and spread the message of a Messiah who would die and rise again so that all could be saved. Jesus says, you do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Let's be people who have in mind things far better than what's merely human. Let me pray for you. Father, we ask that you would move in our hearts and help us to be people who, even though we're stuck in the midst of this world, recognize that there is something much bigger that you're all about. Father, would you help us to love you and to love the world around us and to bring your message of love and hope and peace and forgiveness and eternity to everyone around us. Help us not just to have in mind the concerns of ourselves, but to have in mind the concerns of a world that needs you. Thanks for this morning. Lord, be with us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.